Oi, all you muggles and mudbloods out there, this is Draco Malfoy. In the last episode of this shit Let's Play series, uh, this, this guy is talking a lot of shit because a lot of people happen to like me over Harry Potter. So <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. We're not. <laughs> oh my god, no. Start over. <laughs> no. I don't even think that's British. Whatever, I don't... <laughs> uh, hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play .hgu Volume 2. This is something of artists and, uh... God... Fucking help you all. <laughs> uh, last time we went on a, a training area with Adelie, who didn't know that Alcade died slash fell into a coma. It's honestly the same thing to me. Um... We told her in the beast uh, statue temple instead of like out in the field or in a town or in an email because everything has to take place in like the beast statue room for whatever god awful reason. What's up, guys? I know. I'm upset about LK2. Bye, Emily. There's some things I want to think about by myself. Like how no one's in your way to go after Hisayo now. <laughs> Just kidding. Everyone's in your way because everybody falls in love with Hisayo because he's such a charming guy. And then Kuhn's just like standing there. Like... <laughs> it, it's, it's so weird that they're just like, they have like nothing to add. Like in some quests, they'll give like, they'll have like every character have a line so like they can all contribute to whatever plot is there. Like, no matter who's in your party, like, I don't know. I feel like, I, I feel like they could have done something like that in these situations. Whose whereabouts have been unknown since he lost to me. I wonder where he is now. Me too. If only someone would email us telling us where he is. Ovan. But first, let's talk about Adelie's hobbies. I don't know if you could call it a hobby, but I do have three Java Sparrows as pets. I wouldn't call having a pet a hobby, but I do think it's an interesting thing that, you know, opens up who you are a little bit more. So let's continue this conversation. Now what does Ovan want? If you knew, if you wish to know what happened at Entrance, come to Indiglet Lou. You cannot go there from a Chaos Gate. Remember how you visited it before. Wow! How convenient! But I forgot how I got there before! If only the game could tell me how to get back there again. Let's see. The first time I visited Indiglut Lu was. Oh yeah. Delta Submissive Tragedies 1000 Oaks was the first area I went adventuring to with Adelie. Oh, that's right. Thank God Haseo knew the exact area words too. Just man, but how am I going to get back into the game without Somebody holding my hand, it's it's hard. Oh man and uh, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> whatever, man. Uh what's up? We're here at the place. Not yet. But we, the people watching this let's play, are here at the place that we're gonna go to. With super beautiful music and the weird entrance frozen in a crystal that's chained together. Like, I don't think the chains are going to help if that crystal breaks, but... You know, I get it. Bondage, it's, it's a thing you got to experiment around with. You know, to find out if you're into it or not. <laughs> While our creepy stalker looks at us. Forgive me for saying so, but you look uncomfortable in there. Oh, it's not our creepy stalker, it's Bo. What's up, Bo? We haven't seen you in a long time. I'm sorry. She'd put you and that crystal chain together. I have to be going now. But I promise I'll come back again. It's weird, not to spoil anything that's gonna happen in like ten minutes, but we find Sakubo exactly where 
we left off. Cave told me and I should go look for entrance. You know, according to Ovan, entrance is supposedly an indie glut loo. Okay. Let's head for Delta Submissive Tragedies 1000 Oak. We warp there from the sign behind the Beast Temple. Thanks, Saseo! I forgot already because of the cutscene. But thank you for reminding me where to go again. Uh, what was I saying? I had a thing to say. Yeah, Sakuba said they were going. And when we go there, they're going to be exactly where they were. So, whatever. But... We can't just go straight to something interesting right away. We need to go, since we're in Makanu for the first time in a long time, we're going to go check up on all the vital vistas we've accepted part-time help for after completing their quests, just in case somebody's joining in with Volume 2 without watching Volume 1. So, if you are indeed one of those people, or since I didn't really go over this too much in the first volume in the first place, I'll explain it again here in case anybody forgot. So, all of these vital vistas, these, uh, these steam robot guys that we see in front of us right now, have had quests that we have done for them over the course of the game. The quests were mostly for padding, but there's also unlockable little keeping track of shit you do in the game quests, which is also padding. So, I'm just gonna go around and check up on all of them since we have unlocked all of them here, and because we're in Makanu, and, you know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me why they're, like, not in Doldona, since, you know, that's our main town we're at now. There's really no reason to come back to Makanu, except for guilds, but, like, our guild even went to Doldona, so it's, like, I don't know, coming back to Makanu just seems like it's it's either to go to Raven or to, Yo. like, in this case, like, revisit an old area. For whatever reason. But I don't know, like, I, I feel like they really wanted to push Mac and it was being, like, a crowd favorite for this because, like, I don't know, all of these different Vital Vistas set up shop here, so I guess they had, like, in mind that you'd be revisiting here a lot. You can only access Ravens at home here. You have to go back here for the, uh, like, the crowning ceremony after the tournament for both this game and the next one. Actually, is there one in the next one? I can't remember. The next game's tournament is, like, super weird and totally over the top. Oh, and by the way, if it was too hard to go to Doldona's junk shop for bike parts, they also sell weaker bike parts here. Or the same ones. I don't know. I don't care. They reuse the same dude in, like, the normal kiosk here. So, I don't think the game cared too much either. But whatever. Yeah, and then, I don't know, like, you keep coming back here for cutscenes. Like, e even the epilogue to the game takes place in Makanu. It's it's so weird, but I guess it's not that weird, really, because, like, Makanu in the first game was kind of, like, a big deal, too. Because, um, you go, you go back there for a lot of things as well. I, I guess, like, the main difference is it's... I don't know. It, it kind of makes more sense to me, because it's like, it all relates to, like, going to the cathedral again, and it's like, you can only warp to the cathedral from the Macanu's town, so, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's also not, like, gigantic, too. I, I still can't get over how big Macanu is compared to, like, every other town. It's, like, way too big for its own good. Like, it, it's ridiculous, the size of it. This guy here always reminds me of Dr. Eggman. <laughs> it's because of the, like, the glasses and the red mustache and e even, like, the buttons on him that he gets in, like, the later games, like, after Adventure. Oh my god. Yeah, and so they also give you these items to help you collect data for your stupid side shit here, too. But it's all, like, a, it, it's not a key item for whatever reason. It's, like, a regular item. That you have to, like, keep s space for in your inventory. It's The inventory system just, like, really bothers me so much. Like, I know I've complained about it before, but I'm gonna complain about it again, goddammit. Like, what? Mm, it, it, it's, 
Uh, granted, I, I'm not a huge fan of like limited inventories in games for the in, in the first place. Like, especially games where you're picking up like a lot of items. Like, I, I don't want to like have to like manage the shit I can carry it, unless it's like incorporated into the game well enough. But like for RPGs where we're already suspending our disbelief for like all sorts of crap, why do we have limited inventories in RPGs? Why can we only carry, like, 99 of a one type of item? It's like, who cares? Just, like, keep collecting it. It's like, it doesn't matter. It just bothers me so much. And then, I, I don't know, here in particular, it's like, you can only carry 30 normal items. You're finding, like, two to three different types of attack items in fields to start with. So unless you're really a fan of using them, it's like, you're just going to be throwing them out or giving them to other people anyway. So it's just, like, more time you're wasting with the attack items you keep getting. And then there's, like, a hundred different types of, like, status restoring abilities. Which makes me miss how it was in the first game so much when it was just, like, two different items to, care to take care of, like, all the different status effects. Because the first game knew you were, like, using a limited inventory. You didn't want to waste all your space with shit in the first place. And then, like, something I haven't mentioned yet, because, but, but it really started bothering me, like, in Volume 3, and, and I, I did want to, like, find a point to, like, talk about it, too. I have no idea how they organize healing items in here, because you have, like, your different tiered healing items, like, heals 100 HP, or 250, 350, 700, I, I don't know, but, it, but, but they're, like, all in, like, I'm different really random weird parts this. of the item menu, because, like, you know, the items, like, automatically, like, organize themselves. So they're just, like, everywhere. I, I don't know. Same thing with the SP healing items. Same thing with, like, the revival items. It's... <gasps> I'm done. Let's watch a cutscene. <coughs> oh my god, that hurt my throat. But it's Saku this time. And Saku has a weird ability to raise entrance out of the lake. Maybe Saku was the one that imprisoned him there. I don't know. I would love to know more about this here. Because again, this this really feels like something out of Final Fantasy and not a game about an online game. What are you doing here? Uh, entrance! <laughs> Haseo! You supposed to leave the door alone when there's a sock on it! <laughs> My god, Saku's voice is so beautiful. Ah, oh, she's the same voice actress as Alcade too. <laughs> it's so weird how like different they are. I was looking up Aaron Fitzgerald before, like to see what else she played. I guess she can like do a pretty decent range of different types of characters, but like, I don't know. Like, even, even with Alcade, like, you can hear her voice, like, crack here and there, and you've got to, like, wonder, like, is this intentional or not? Like, same thing with Saku. Saku can be just fine, but, like, when she needs to, like, do her squealing, it's just, like, really annoying. But then again, like, I think any kind of squealing in anime in general is, like, super annoying. Like, I think it's one of the reasons people think English voice acting in anime is so bad. Because it sounds, the squealing sounds better in Japanese. But it's, like... I don't know, maybe it does sound better in Japanese, like, in that kind of context, but, like, I, I don't know. I just think it's, like, super annoying when characters need to, like, elongate all of their words and do squeals and stuff like that. But whatever. We're here to talk about something else. Look! It's another phase! It's Gory, the Machinator, the Machinator, I don't know what you want to call it, but, um... Yeah, so first off, the music in this fight is one of my favorites. It's it's very different sounding than the other ones, and I think that helps add to, like, 
Sakubo's like childish nature. Because, like, e even, like, the Avatar itself is, like, very childish, and we have these super cartoony attacks. And maybe that's, like, another reason why this is one of my favorite Avatar fights in the game. So, um, it's interesting. I, I, th I think Gori, in particular, is really interesting, how they did this compared to the first game. In the first game, Gori was, like, I don't know. I always thought it looked like a set of earrings. Because that's just, like, I, I don't know. But then they have, like, faces on them, too, that pop out, and it's super creepy. And then they, like, talk with each other, too, and it, it's even creepier. But it's funny, too. So, since it's kind of like a twin thing, I think it's interesting that Sakubo was, like, designed to be that. In fact, I'm gonna say right now, before going into, like, at the risk of spoiling anything, I, I feel like Sakubo has very little impact on the plot itself. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they made Sakubo's character to be, like, one character being shared by two different people to, like, help give it that, like, twin aspect to connect it more with Gori. But, as you can probably see here, you know, Saku and Bo will both be taking turns. Saku will be on the offensive. Bo will run away and, like, throw bubbles at you, and if you can't really escape Bo, then you know, they do a powerful attack. They've got, like, the sun and the moon thing going on here, but we've seen that in their, um, in their, uh, character designs themselves. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's weird that I like Gory so much here, because Gory is probably, like, one of my least favorite phases in the original game. But, uh, oh, I do like this. Their data drain, too. Let's shut up for a second. Like, I like how there's, like, blue and pink hexagons for the two of them. And they, like, double up to do it. it it's weird, though, that, like, Bo is attacking you, too. Because, like, if Ida's just supposed to, like... Well, I don't know. I mean, Pi attacked you as well. Every Avatar attacked you to, when you, they went out of control. And that's what this is, but... Anyway, so Gory was, like, not... I don't know. I wouldn't say, like, it, Gory itself isn't one of my favorite phases from... Or it's, like, my least favorite phase from, like, the first series. It's more just, like, what's happening when you fight it. Because, like, whenever I think of Gory, I think of the ending to Dot Hack Outbreak, which was the third game in the series of four games of the original. And, and I, I always thought, like, the third game's ending was, like, super, super weak and boring, and it, it just kind of left on a really dull... Stay tuned for the next episode of Dot Hack Video Games. <laughs> like, I really liked how each game ended except for the third one, and because Gory is, like, the last boss of the, th the third game, you know, I, I always think about that ending and just how, like, boring and lit down it felt. I guess, like, uh, it's around that time, too, like, at some point in Outbreak, where, like, I don't know, I, I am getting less invested in the story as well. Because one thing I really like about the original games in, like, the first, like, half, so, like, the first two games, is that it really does feel like a mis- <laughs> It really does feel like a mystery story that you're trying to unravel, and so many things just- it, It's, like, exciting trying to, like, like, figure out the pieces to everything and learning new information and everything like that. And I mean, I, I wouldn't say, like, the mystery aspect is gone in the second half of the games, but you do kind of, like, get enough information and support to actually start, like, stop being affected by these phases and, like, all of the damage that the virus is doing and, like, start mounting a counterattack against it. Like, in the first half of the games, like, you'd always, like, just end up running into the, uh, the phases and stuff like that. Bad things would just start happening, and it, it you were kind of getting jerked around a lot, too, because, like, all the characters in the game weren't, like, joined up together and agreed to help each other out despite their differences. And, like, when that actually finally does start happening, you know, it kind of just feels like a more, like you know, save the day kind of thing. Which is fine, it's just, I really like the first two games more because of, like, the mystery aspect. But... We beat you up, Sakubo. Give me entrance. Saku. 
Aw, he cares. Sort of. Haseo? That you? What's up, Bo? Bo? Can't even tell the difference half the time. <laughs> yeah. Where's Saku? Is she alright? Yeah, it makes you wonder how they were, like, playing that fight. Like, were they, like, sharing a pair of headsets and doing it? You have to, like, really wonder how they're even, like, doing this in the first place together. Haseo, please. You have to find a way to help Endrance. Uh, yeah. By the way, I love this part so much. Not that part. This one. Hey, Andrins. Wake up. Can't you hear me? Oh, it's you. Greetings to you, too. Would you mind leaving me alone? <laughs> Would you mind pissing off? <laughs> Get all weepy on me. Get up already. <laughs> I've lost everything. I no longer have any reason to awaken in the morning. Nah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> You've been nominated by Al-K. What? He has no context for what the hell you're talking about. What do you mean, nominated by al -Qaid? Like, he would know what that means. I was able to affect the world, but now, she is gone forever, and I... Wait a minute, are you talking about that cat? Mia, no matter what happened in our lives, she was always my friend. She went away once, but she came back. Yup. Talked about that she when we fought Endrance. In this world. And that was why I did everything that I could for her. Everything. Feeling joy and love. And pain at her words made me so happy. That so-called cat you're talking about is named Ida, and she's a mysterious human-eating monster. You're wrong. She is she. She was the only one. She was the only one who needed me. <laughs> but no. I'm sorry, this, this entire scene reminds me of, like, a mother trying to get her teenager out of bed in the morning or depressed teenager out of bed in the morning it's like i don't know it's so weird i would say i just like walks up and is like hey get up don't make me laugh if everyone thought like that then this world would become full of things that had nothing to do with anyone don't tell me she was all you had She's not. You've just been denying everything that wasn't her. Hate to give Haseo credit, but you haven't done does anything, have a good point. And yet you're just giving up without a fight. That is legit good advice. But... But I... No buts. No excuses. No one but her ever needed me for anything. Hey, listen to me. I... I need your help. Not to ruin the mood, but didn't Saku need entrance for, like fangirling or whatever 
The rest is up to you. Didn't I'll be the world like a door entrance and like want him around? Entrance. It's not Ida that's holding you back now. It's you. Again, good point. Asayo is being surprisingly intelligent in this episode. So, with that, I guess only time will tell if Endurance will help us. Nah, I'm gonna do it right now. He does. Endurance is gonna join our party soon. <laughs> uh, see you later, everybody. We'll talk more about this later. Bye.